Many people struggle with budgeting, and much of the stress of budgeting is really completely unnecessary. In this episode, we're going to talk about why you probably don't need a budget, some situations in which you might want to have a budget, and most importantly, how to make the budgeting process simple and painless. Hi, I'm John Shear, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget sullivan Mermel, and I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And John, before we get started on budgeting, let's just remind people to subscribe. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, That's John. Right. So I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on budgeting and how you talk to clients about it and how you talk to friends and neighbors, because I know I get that. Yeah, question a lot. Yeah, and, and I think it's interesting as you think about, like I think oftentimes about budgeting, oh, when you're first starting out, but you know, we have those conversations. I have them with clients. I have them with friends about at various stages. We get it as people right. are re- getting to retirement. Geez, I need to get a budget. Right. Right. And so some of the conversations that we have with people are about it. And it's, and, um, Number one, I think it's really difficult to do the traditional way of budgeting. Set up, I'm going to spend this much money, and then I check every time I want to go out to eat. Can I, do I have money in the budget? I know it didn't work for me. It's really hard to, to take care of things from that standpoint. So the first thing I do is step back and try to have, have ask people, like, what are you trying to accomplish? Right. What's the goal? And, and, and uh, as opposed to, I think people oftentimes feel like, well, I'm supposed to, like, I'm supposed to have a budget. This is what we're supposed to do. Well, sure, if you need to, but we'll talk to people about, listen, are you saving the right amount for right. your liquidity, for your emergency needs, for your retirement, for college, if that's a goal? Are you spending more than what you're making? Do you have credit card debt? Like, listen, if you're taking care of all of the goals, then I don't really care if you have a budget or not. I mean, if, if you are care as, as a, uh, you know, a client or a friend, you say, listen, I want to know how much I'm spending on going out to eat. Absolutely. Let's track that. But if you're reaching all of your other goals, it's sort of like, well, I don't know what the purpose. There's no necessary purpose. Necessarily, there's no purpose for knowing exactly how much you spend in different directions unless you're not happy with what's going on. So that's the first thing we do is just say, listen, what are we trying to solve for here? Yeah, yeah I think you're right that there's a feeling of shouldness about right. like I should have a budget. Okay. Now, uh, we put that on uh, its head a little bit. No, you should be saving 10% of your income, and you shouldn't have credit card debt. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. So let's assume that you are saving 10% of your income, and you don't have credit, and maybe a little more for college or some other stuff, and you've got, uh, you don't have credit card debt. Okay, then if you don't like having a budget, then that's fine. Now... Sometimes I think that should feeling is more about being intentional. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think with budgeting, people can get into this deprivation thinking, like, I should have a budget, I should be depriving myself. And budgeting can get you to be out of deprivation and into intentional. Like, Mm I am in control. I'm not just reacting to every buy signal that I get from every... um, Every time I log into my internet, yeah. you know, there's all kinds of stuff that I want to buy now showing up on my screen. So it's like I'm not just reacting to all that, but I'm being intentional. I'm thinking about it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So sometimes that's people's motivation. If they don't want to just back into it. They want to be practically thinking about it. Yeah, I, and I love that word, as you know, intentionality, yeah. right? Being intentional about what it's doing. And as you're describing that, I, it's interesting to me as I thought about that, like being intentional about those goals that we have. And maybe it's you know, saving money to buy a second home or whatever things you've got going on or to buy a boat, right. as we talked about in a previous episode, right? Those sorts of things. But then there's also, I think anyway, value that depri- like I should be depriving myself. I know a lot of our conversations with folks are about, listen, once you've got all your you know things, the things that you should do taken right. care of, right? Because there are some things that objectively know, you know, there's some, some basic fundamentals as we mm-hmm. call them, but then giving permission to spend, Right? right. Sometimes the feeling of, oh, I shouldn't be, you know, this is what I, and I'm spending too much. And then you look at it and you go, no, you're not. And you go, oh, maybe one of the things is 
take away like don't have a but like where, where, when you have money spend it because right. that's there's some there can be value in that depending on what your outlook for i love the description and again it goes to what are we trying to accomplish here not you know not doing something for the sake of doing it like what's that movie office space filing the tps reports because you found like <laughs> no let's figure out and then there are some times as we talked about in the intro like who who really might want to have a budget and think about that and so if you have maybe you're not paying off your credit cards all the time you're running some debt maybe you're not saving as much as you feel like you should be or that your goals dictate and uh there you give a great description about you know um do i need to weigh myself and figure out my fitness every day Eh, maybe right but you know when my pants start to get a little bit tight i've got an idea that geez maybe something's going on with my eating right right and so and and a similar thing hey if the spending the savings isn't quite where you want it to be then maybe we need to take a look and be pay more attention be mindful and it can be in stages though too just like the eating thing right for some people you know my pants are starting to get a little bit tight maybe i need to count calories but maybe i just need to you know not eat pizza after nine o'clock at night and quit eating and, you know, donuts in the morning for breakfast. So I can try that, and then if it doesn't, you know, and sometimes that's all I need, right? I don't need to have a budget. I just need to let's not spend so much, right? I remember one of my friends, not like me at all, who said, yeah, my pants were getting tight, and I realized I had to stop eating that pint of ice cream every night. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> do you need you a know? budget? To, do, do you need to count no, calories? Like, you go, no, let's do that first and see what happens, <laughs> right, right? exactly. Let me just try not doing that every night. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but then if you do that and your pants are still getting tight, then you go, well, geez, maybe we should take the next step and right. see what the calories are or see what the mixture of protein. and I mean, right. there's other things, but we don't you don't need to pull a nuclear option. Geez, my pants are getting tight. I need to, you know, eat three pieces of lettuce every day. Well, no, let's cut out the pint of ice cream first. Right? Right. Let's think about those things. So it's not like, oh, you absolutely have to do this. It's, well, okay. In some cases, you can just go, let's just be mindful of this. Not, let's not spend quite so much when we go out, Okay. All right, and let's not buy so many things on Amazon or whatever your thing is. Oh, good, that solves the problem. Or wait a minute, that's still not solving the problem. Now, maybe we need to actually budget out some of these things. You know, is it the grocery bill or is it the Amazon? So we can, we can do some things with that, right? Right, and if I can't get control of it, then that might be compulsive spending, which is a whole other issue and worthy of its own episode. Right. Now, one thing I would like to talk about is uh, there's been times in my life where I've really kept a tight budget. I've mm -hmm. known exactly where it's gone. So if I wasn't making as much particularly. Uh, it's like I had to really plan it out. Mm -hmm. I had to really be intentional and plan it out. And yeah. one of my motivations for trying to make more was so that I didn't have to do that. Yeah, so right. I had more flexibility, you know, and, and so that's one of the things that I value. Uh, and I'm working harder, developing myself, doing a lot of different things just so that I don't have to have this pain of like, tracking my spending about everything as long as I'm within these guidelines. Yeah, that's great. You know, it's interesting to hear you say that because I'm sort of the opposite. Like for me, and maybe that's why I feel like I can relate to people, I, I, tracking what and sticking to the, to the budget. And I mean, it's just not my nature. It's really, really hard. And, I, and you feel, I don't know, I can feel like a failure. Like, oh, geez. And that's where I, you know, I should be doing this and I'm not doing this. Here's this idea. I'm not getting there. And that's where, for me anyway, it's really valuable to step back and to go, hey, for people that can do, you know, keep track of everything that they do, it's just this summer our kids are doing a reading program. I'm reading with them, and they track every minute they spend. I, I've got to, you know, it's hard for me to do those things. It's not my nature to do that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so then I feel like, oh... I'm not doing it right. Like I'm, you know. Well, no, okay. How can we help me address this in other ways, right? It's not that you necessarily need one. And if you do need a budget, let's say, all right, our pants are getting a little too tight, right? Geez, I'm not saving what I want to. I've kind of just tried, you know. Let's just cut out things, and it hasn't worked. Then I think the big thing for people to do is not so much lay out a prescription. Here's what I'm going to spend next month. But the first step is to look back at what we've spent. And in today's world, right, with so much going on, credit cards. Uh, you know, you can print out, a, 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 I'll literally do this. Hey, take your last 12 months of credit card bills, and I don't want to go through each line item and see where it went. I just want to, what's the number? How much did you spend this month, right? You know, maybe a couple's got a couple of credit cards and a, a couple of bank statements, and you can go and you can see pretty quickly, all right, here's the mortgage that comes out of the out of the bank account, and here's, you know, your insurance maybe, or some utilities. And, and then just at the end of the day, like how much do you literally spend? 
and you take a look at that and you go, oh, okay, there's a reasonable number. And golly, why is that number twice what the other number was? And just look at some of those things. A lot of times it can be that, that simple as, you know, what are the last 12 months of spending? Right, mm -hmm. and that's not trying to. You don't have to dig into all the things, but then you go, oh, wait a minute, what's going on here? Like maybe we need to dig in and see how much money is going to your coffee habit versus your other things, right? But at the first level, it's like, listen, what's the next step? And just laying that out, and then you can kind of look back and go, oh, that's that's for re people approaching retirement. Do you need to have a budget that tells where everything goes? I don't think so. Do you need to know how much you spend? Yeah, that's really important. Yes. Right? But you can yeah. look at that and you go, listen, if we're not going into debt, here is here is your spending. Right. Oh, okay. How do I feel about that? Jeez, I just don't like that for various reasons. Good. Then you can take some action on it, right? But knowing that, I guess that's the point for me anyways, that knowledge, like being aware because, you know, you pull out the credit card, it just goes. It's like chips in a casino. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's just really hard. <laughs> right. And to look at it and go, oh, geez, I guess we're not, and we've had this with clients. We're spending too much. No, we're not spending too much. Let's do this exercise. Oh, that's not as much as I thought it was. Or, holy moly, where's all the money going? I didn't realize it was that much. Right? Just that awareness, I think, is that first step before you have to go and pencil in every expense. Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting because I am more of a tracker. You can see that I have a tracking watch, and I like I, I like uh, keeping track of things. It does help motivate me, yeah. right? But I don't always track my money. Uh, and i got to say, right now, yeah. I'm not really tracking my money. You know, yeah. like, so I'm tracking other things, but not yeah. that particular thing. So, but when I do want to get more intentional about my finances, one of the things that I'll do is just take a spiral notebook with me and mark down every time I spend some money. Yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't matter what it's on. It just observe. I'm not trying to cut down. I'm just trying to observe what am I spending money on. And funny story to me anyway, is that one time I did this exercise and I was looking at all my spending. And at the time, I was taking improv classes. And I realized that a lot of my money was going to buying drinks for everybody. Because in the improv class, there were people like me who was who had a business. But then there were people who were just, like, starting out. I mean, they were making minimum wage, if yeah. that. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and so I'd be like, oh, you know. And I, I didn't begrudge that. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't have a problem with that. But I didn't realize how much I was spending on it. Like I'm happens. buying drinks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. And so it was like, oh, am I okay with that? I was like, yeah, I'm spending more money on that particular thing than I would have thought. But that that was fine with me. Yeah. I wasn't necessarily yeah. going to adjust it. Yeah. But it was just like, oh, okay, you know. But being, right. being yeah. aware, right? So I think about those things. Be aware of where it's going. Then you can be intentional. Right. And then to start off with, what are you trying to accomplish? Not every You don't need to have a budget. You might want to have it for various reasons. Try to figure out what you're what you're trying to accomplish first, and then see how much, how detailed you need to be in order to get what you're trying to accomplish. Right. So I think that's maybe a great place to wrap things up here. Again, I'm John Shear. This is Bridget Sullivan Mermel. We both run fee only financial planning practices. We both work with clients all across the country, but we're also members of the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners. Uh, if, so you can find out more about ACP by visiting acplanners.org. If you want to find an advisor in your area, please check out again acplanners.org. And don't forget to subscribe. Helps us out and we really appreciate it.